Today we are learning and training to be a fighter pilot. We are here in the F-16 right now and you guys are about to watch the journey and see the day. I'm Captain Amy Fiedler, call sign Rebel. I'm the commander and pilot of the F-16 Viper demonstration team. I'm so excited for my flight with Demi. A, because I think Demi's just a fantastic role model for young boys and girls all over. She's a huge inspiration to me personally. I mean, this girl's 21. She's an absolute hustler. Just seeing all the things that she's involved in, seeing all the hard work that she puts into literally every single thing she does, whether it's fitness, whether it's her investing, everything, really just, it's an inspiration. So it's a huge honor to get to fly with her. I'm really excited to just show her the team. I'm excited for her to really plug in to what Viper Demo is and kind of the mission that we have and what we display to the public. And then working with her, you know, getting her through all the different experiences and kind of giving her a taste of what I've been through to make it here. And then like to cap that all off, we finally get to go in the airplane together, pull some G's. I'm gonna show her just how athletic flying the F-16 can be. We're gonna make sure we're pulling nine G's probably a couple times, and then doing some of the stuff that you see me do in air shows. It's one thing to see it from the ground, it's one thing to see it at an air show, but actually getting to experience it and feel what it feels like, I just love sharing that feeling with people. All right, y'all, we are getting medical screened or what? Yeah. So she's all the way to the back, so that's all on straight. So going over medical problems, sounds like no to basically everything, so feeling pretty good today. Any nasal congestion or like upper respiratory symptoms, like stuffy nose, runny nose? Um, no, I'm good. I, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. So I'll let you know. I can see your ears. Thank you. The only other stuff I think that folks would ask. Otherwise, have fun. Thank you. If anything Appreciate happens it. or changes, let us know. Especially like you wake up tomorrow and just aren't feeling well and feel like you can't clear your ears. Just let us know. Perfect. We'd rather find you another time to go than have you like injure your drum. Looks like we got approved, <laughs> y'all. Let's go. Yeah, so Demi is cleared to fly in the F-16 now. We just have to go get one more signature to clear her to sign or clear her to fly because she's a little smaller than most pilots are. Uh, normally there's like height, weight requirements. She meets all the requirements to get waived to be in the ejection seat, but it's also like accepting a certain level of risk. So what we just did in there with Demi is kind of like a very small version of the medical clearance that we go through as pilots. We go through about two days worth of medical screening. They draw blood, they check your eyesight, they make sure you're not colorblind. You do a bunch of different hearing tests. So it's like very, very stressful. Uh, you never know what you're gonna find wrong with yourself. Uh, like you have to get an EKG. Uh, for girls, we have to go through like a feminine exam. So we do a bunch more medical screening typically. And then yearly, you kind of experience what I go through yearly. We go in every single year, we take a hearing test, we take an eye test, and then we talk with the flight dog and he checks our ears like what you did. With yeah, the he's like, breathe. <laughs> All of a sudden you forget to breathe. Yeah. It's like, uh. You're terrified. It's I, like you overthink he's everything. He's like, breathe normal. <laughs> I was like, how do I normally breathe? I don't know. Yeah, so that's kind of what we go through yearly. They make sure like our lungs are still good to go. They make sure we can still Valsalva or clear our ears while we're airborne. So you kind of got to experience a little of that. And then you experience like how they check our height. They check our sitting height. They check our like hip to knee length to make sure that you're actually going to fit in the cockpit, which you're going to definitely fit. Yeah, they <laughs> asked height and then she made me sit down. I was like, no, my legs are what's long. Should, I was like, oh no, I'm not going to be the requirement. Yeah, that's, that's so. awesome. But we're good to go and we're going to go get that paper signed for you so you're ready to fly tomorrow. Let's do this, girl. Let's do this. Once again, welcome. I'm Sergeant Dance, Aerospace Physiology. Going to go over some incentive flyer information, get you ready to go for the jet, make sure you're, you're good to go. So we're going to go over altitude and pressure, oxygen over the Gs, that AGSM I was talking about, motion sickness, some self-imposed stresses, and then finally some uh, restrictions before or after flying. So this is the regulator. This is how oxygen is provided to you through the mask. So there's going to be a green hose that's swinging all the way around. It's going to be connected to your harness, and then your mask is going to connect to that. Uh, the regulator has the green switch, which is what it turns it on. It provides oxygen. The white switch is going to be either normal or 100%. Typically, it's always going to be in the normal setting. And then the emergency is going to give you an increased amount of pressure. So 
if you were to feel those symptoms of hypoxia, what you do is put all three switches up. And what that's going to do is give you an increased amount of oxygen, 100%, with increased amount of pressure, which help uh, fill the alveoli and get the O2 throughout your body. This is not exactly what you're gonna be using, uh, but here's a helmet and a mask, push and turn here. And then there's gonna be a green hose that connects into this. Uh, there's these two little prongs right here. It's a disconnect warning device. Okay, so for some reason, if you're not plugged into the ship supply hose or the green hose, you'll feel a restriction of breathing. Very similar to a suffocation feeling, but you're gonna be able to breathe through it. It's almost like breathing through a straw. So if you feel that type of sensation, check the hose and make sure it's connected. If you like are trying to breathe and nothing's coming out, verify the that the regulator is in fact on. So the HSM has three different components. Uh, the leg component is, and legs and abs is the biggest component. You have big muscle groups uh, in that area, which is going to help restrict the amount of blood going down. Second component is gonna be cyclic breathing, which we're gonna actually practice and go into that a little bit. But the breathing component, a lot of people think that it's for trying to actually breathe, but it's actually to pump blood. So we're trying to utilize the breathing technique to get blood back up from the heart into the brain. What we're gonna do is we're gonna practice the lower body strain itself. And what we wanna do is our abs, almost like a planking position, we're gonna push them out. I know it's kind of reverse, like you'd think you wanna crunch them, but the reason we wanna push them out is because that way uh, the G suit is going to push in. So we're gonna try and meet that pressure and it's kind of like a planking position. All right, so in the F16, you're gonna be kind of reclined. And then the first thing you do when you sit down, there's a tab right here, you're gonna pull it out. It's gonna allow you to push uh, the rider pedal as far as you can away. That way you don't actually have them in your way. We're gonna get our knees, or our feet kind of spread out. And then when we get into the fight sign position, we're gonna have our feet inwards, get our knees together with the butt squeeze, right? Popping out. And then when they say fight's on, and then every three seconds. So that's a little fast. All right, so we'll, we'll do it one more time. And then- I should go off your and then speed. Okay, go so go off my count, okay. all right? So you, same thing with what you're gonna do with the pilot is they're gonna say fight's on. Whenever they, you hear them breathe, that's when you're gonna breathe. All right, legs out, knees in, fight's on. Hold it. And relax, 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 relax. That's pretty good. Let's yeah. go. I think you'll be all right. So what we're gonna do next is actually go ahead and do the reduced oxygen breathing device or ROBD. And it's connected to our HFT or hypoxia familiarization trainer, which is this device here. And we're actually going to go ahead and get you hypoxic. And hypoxia is you something- you pass out? I'm not gonna make you pass out, hopefully. So the plan is for you to recognize the hypoxia before you actually pass out. And that's the biggest thing for pilots to know too, is kind of how it feels, because uh, hypoxia, everyone feels it differently. Sometimes uh, you might get dizziness or motion sickness type feelings, other people might get euphoria. Could you imagine if a pilot was going flying and got euphoric out of nowhere, right? Like if they were feeling like super happy, they might not think, hey, this is hypoxia, I should correct for this, because they're in a really good feeling. Well, now we're gonna do a hypoxia test. We're gonna test to see what it feels like. So tomorrow, if I am not feeling a-okay, I can communicate that I'm feeling a little bit of hypoxia and have a better understanding of what it feels like and hopefully not pass out in the jet tomorrow. You ready to start? All right, so currently 96% uh, SpO2, pulse rate's 86. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And then when you feel hypoxia, what I want you to do is just, one, go through your procedures, get all three switches up, right? And then I'll give you 100% uh, O2. We're gonna go ahead and fly the aircraft here. So go ahead, uh, like I said earlier, bring this up so that way we're able to straighten level. And currently SpO2 is still at 99%, so shouldn't be feeling a thing at this point in time. Uh, we're getting, you're getting 15% oxygen. So like I said, you're gonna get down to 7% oxygen, and then you're gonna start feeling your hypoxia symptoms probably before that. SpO2 is down to 95%. Um, this is potentially, uh, might start feeling some symptoms. Uh, right now, you can see your chest rising and falling a little bit slower, but that's okay. Are you feeling any hypoxia symptoms? A little bit, like definitely more lightheadedness. Okay, so lightheadedness. Uh, could you feel the labored breathing like I was talking about earlier? Anything else? If you were to feel like this in the aircraft, would you be able to recognize it as hypoxia? Okay, do you want to correct for hypoxia at this point in time? Good, get all three switches up. 
All right, perfect. So after you get all three suits up, make sure you let the pilot uh, know as well. I'm feeling hypoxic or feeling physiological symptoms. I went into all three switches up, uh, and then at that point in time, they'll go through their emergency procedures, more than likely declare an IFE and descend below 10,000 feet. Uh, but you, once you get in that Humpson 2 are you already feeling back to normal at this point in time? Or at least kind of like feeling a little bit better? Okay, so typically from hypoxic hypoxia, which is specifically what you experience, uh, it takes about 15 to 30 seconds to kind of feel back to normal. So I'm going to stop the flow, flow of Humpson 2 and that's the demo. You can go and drop the mask. Definitely want to know how to do that. That way, for some reason, you do get air sick in aircraft, be able to drop that mask, right? Yeah, for So sure. once, you, once you do get the uh, oxygen equipment from AFE, just practice that a few times awesome. okay. but i'll take your equipment and that's it yay can i pass absolutely i didn't pass I'm, out i passed yeah you did <laughs> you were able to recognize hypoxia Perfect. and in the event you did feel hypoxia you know what to do get all three switches out so do you always feel that like is that for certain i'm going to feel that tomorrow there's a very very high chance that if you were to feel hypoxia that exactly how you would feel um how sometimes symptoms that would it be that was probably worst case scenario because you would recognize oh, okay. it before you got to that. Got it. You got you got down to sixty five percent SpO two, which is like the absolute lowest where a lot of let people go. So, trickiest part of this whole situation is finding a flight suit for <laughs> your girl over here. So, how close do you think we're gonna get to this? Let's see. Well, maybe. All you're just gonna do is uh, keep that shirt on, just change, uh, leave your boots, all that. Cool. And then there's a bathroom at the front desk. You just go to the front desk and take a right. We're gonna go over the helmet, mask, free 120, harness, and G suit, and the LPU. This is your HG55B helmet. It provides basic head and face protection. It also has for the communication and connection to the MV20P mask. The big thing with the helmet is you want to make sure this nape strap right here is not rolled up like this when it's on your head. So when Aaron Spencer fits you up a little bit, you're going to make sure it's flat on the back of your head. It's going to help you for your proper mask fit. So when you're in the F-16 flying and you're pulling those high Gs, you have proper uh, calm and proper breathing for your, um, for your oxygen. On the left side of your helmet, you're going to have your calm connection and your bladder supply hose, which we're going to go into the MB-20P mask. You have two bayonets, your bayonet slide and your bayonet receivers. When we fit you up, they're going to go into three clicks. They're audible clicks. Your calm core is going to click in here and your bladder supply hose is going to click in here. The reason that is important, if you feel like you're going to get nauseous during your flight, what I'm going to ask you to do is take your right hand, put it on the side of your helmet and swipe down, releasing the bayonets so the mask falls out and it will give you motion sickness back if need be. This is your CSU 22 feet G-suit. It's a full leg, um, and then there's one bladder across your tor torso. Anti-G garment. It provides um, enhanced G protection during the sortie after you start pulling four plus Gs. So the way it's gonna go in here, step into it, your hose is gonna be on your left hip, and then you're gonna connect the snaps here, zip up the zipper, just like that. How do we look? You're standing up straight, you're doing it. Good. So, obviously, this is one of the most important jobs there is. Yes, ma'am. So, what do you think is the most challenging part of your job, and why do you think it is one of the most crucial jobs there is when it comes to aviation in the military? Uh, I think, honestly, the most challenging part is um, just kind of knowing, knowing your stuff. That's kind of like a big thing. We have a very uh, small window for error. Obviously, we're dealing with a lot of like flying equipment, so there's very, very little room where we can make mistakes. Obviously, we're all human; we do make mistakes, but a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure, um, so that is a big thing. Um, we deal with a lot of uh, flying equipment, a lot of parachutes, and all that. So we have a we have a big plate uh, for us, and we have to take care of it all to make sure our air crew get up in the air safely and come back down safely. So Now hold that up where you feel is pretty comfortable. Just with one hand, just hold it up. Cool. And I'm just going to make adjustments, all right? It's time to test this thing. <laughs> all right. So we're just going to go through a series of three tests. I'm just going to have you take a deep breath in and okay. hold it. And then when I say release, all you right, can go. breathe out. And what we're looking for is air coming out at the top there or at the bottom or just anywhere in general. So if you feel any air, let me know and we can make adjustments, okay?
if anything goes wrong while we're out there, like I'm going to communicate to you and I will be very clear and direct with what I need you to do, where I need you to put your hands. The important thing about it is like, if something is going wrong or you're like confused about something, uh, just make sure you're like, calm down, make sure you're listening. Like we can't have someone out there that's freaking out. Cause like, I'm going to have to be like yelling at you instructions of what I need you to do. And I just need to like listen calmly. Yep. And then we'll make it through it. So this is all about um, getting into the cockpit, kind of what it's going to look like while you're in there, where some big things are that I either need you to touch or need you not to touch. And then um, after that, we're going to go through how to eject from the aircraft and then what's going to happen post ejection, um, like once your canopy deploys and getting back down. Really, the only note that you need to worry about is like once we put our seats in arm, like you have the power to eject both of us out of this airplane, right? So just like don't touch the handle. Don't pull it. Right, don't pull it. There's no way you could do it by accident at all. Like this is not something to be nervous about. Ejection, ejecting is a very deliberate decision. It, caught, it takes like 50 pounds of force to pull this handle. So I don't want you to be like, oh no, like I can't touch the handle. Like you don't have to worry about it. I have literally never thought about the handle and like I'll like squeeze, it squeezes between my legs. It like moves forward and back. Like it is a deliberate decision to eject. <laughs> So I'm Staff Sergeant Kyle Mattern. I'm a dedicated crew chief for the demo team. Uh, my job is overall aircraft serviceability and pilot safety. Staff Sergeant Jordan Brown Stoby. I'm the team's electrical and environmental specialist. Basically, I'm an electrician for the jet and I also ensure that whenever Rebel or any other pilot's flying that they have proper pressurization and oxygen flow up there in the canopy. Second Lieutenant Alexandria Brunn and I'm so excited to be a part of the demo team this year because um, it's just such a family and getting to be a part of a close-knit group of people that travels around and really exemplifies um, today's air power is a really special opportunity. I'm about to taxi Rebel off for her air show flight today and we're gearing up for tomorrow so I'm really excited. Let's go! So when she gives me this signal, I'm going to tell her run it up and then I'm going to do this. I'm telling her to come straight out and then what we do is we do this. at Shaw Air Force Base with the F-16 Viper demo team. We are so excited to get in the jet tomorrow. I was able to learn so many new things about aviation today that I did not know, and I hope you guys did too. So let's take this flight suit off because you know it's gonna be all, all sweaty for tomorrow, and let's get to it, so let's go. Demi's pretty athletic, by pretty athletic, I mean, she's one of the most athletic people I've ever met. So I think it's gonna be a huge testament to, it's probably gonna like maybe boost my ego a little bit if she is tired after the flight, cause it's gonna show me that, heck yeah, you know, I you have to be in shape to do this job. So I think she'll probably be able to handle it pretty well. She already kind of flips around on the ground. Uh, but if she does get sick in the plane, it's probably gonna make me feel pretty good about what I do every day. <laughs> A lot excited. <laughs> I got my barf bags. I ate a bagel and a banana this morning, and everyone's good vibes, so the day's finally come. Good to go. Damn. Six acts just in case she needs to throw up in this flight. Hopefully not. Uh, you'll hear me come up on the intercoms. I'll be like, Demi, can you hear me? Practice putting the mic on and off. And uh, you ready to go? I'm so excited.
That was the craziest thing I have ever done in my entire freaking life. <laughs> and now we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about everything we just did. So Yeah, so first of all, Demi, like fist bump, congrats girl. Let's go. You survived and you handled it like champ. Like I cannot tell you guys what Demi just experienced because I it's unfathomable how I feel right now. Like Keep going. Yeah, so yesterday Demi went through a lot of training. She went through a lot of preparation to get ready for this flight and you probably still didn't feel ready for the flight. Like once the jet was started, she we turns it on, off. I'm like, oh crap, <laughs> I forgot everything I practiced yesterday. So you remembered how to arm your seat, that's important, that's awesome, and you knew how to turn your mic on and off so that we could talk to each other. So those are all, like those are the important things to remember really. Uh, so tell me, first of all, how did it feel when we were taking off? Like when I put it into afterburner, what did you feel? It's not even close to what I thought it was gonna be, the whole experience as a whole, but it was crazy, we just, <laughs> yeah. Literally just straight up, like I look out and it's just blue sky and I'm like, holy shit, we're like going into space right now. Yeah, for sure. I distinctly remember the first time I ever took off in a fighter jet. When you put it into afterburner, you can feel like you get pushed into your seat. You're yeah. accelerating so fast. It's like ludicrous plus mode, but like <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, so for the takeoff, what we did is we put the gear up and then we accelerated to 400 knots. That's close to 550 miles per hour. And then I took us up to 70 degrees nose high on our takeoff. So that was the blue sky you were looking at. And we climbed up to 9,000 feet in about five seconds. So 
we hit that afterburner and girl you're just hanging on for life dear life like Thanks. you're at the mercy of whatever i'm doing in the front seat um but also what else did you get to do you guys got to fly <laughs> you know your girl about to fly that fighter jet and we skirted and she's like spin it to the right i'm like bet we start just spinning and i'm like oh my goodness yep so you'll have the gopro finish from that too yeah. demi flew this jet it was awesome to watch her fly uh, we had to like, I had to show her like how to move the throttle, right? It's like kind of counterintuitive. I was like, pull left, and you're yeah. like moving your left hand to uh, pull the throttle back. But Demi flew. She did some flips and tricks herself. It was pretty awesome. Like with, I almost didn't help at all. I was just like, you She's do you. Best. She was like, We're just take it. it. I was like, okay, it's good. <laughs> yeah, so that's super awesome. And then uh, we came back. Um, we had like a little bit of a landing gear issue when we came back, but. Uh, you saw it, it's pretty easy. You always have someone out there that can help you. So I was talking to somebody on the ground who helped me go through my checklist, make sure that we were safe and like able to land. Now I would say you did the thing. We did it, guys. Yeah. We flew a fire jet today. <laughs> I'm just, there's no words. I'm very grateful. The entire Viper, Dem Viper demo team was and has been super incredible. Everyone's super kind, very articulate. I've got to learn way more in the last two days than I ever thought I would about aviation in general. And we had the best time doing it. So yeah. thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Air Force, you guys are dope. This, that's the gnarliest Chair Force I've ever seen in my <laughs> life, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I gotta throw one plug out there just uh -huh. really quick. So Demi and I got to go fly an awesome sortie, but the maintenance guys on our team they worked all day yesterday to make sure that we had a jet ready to fly. They found us a jet that worked today and they had a spare jet. So like if that first one that we got in wasn't working, we were gonna get airborne because they had a second jet waiting for us. Girl, oh, yeah. you are such a boss babe. <laughs> Guys, shout out to Rebel over here because she has been seamlessly helping us understand and communicate to us the absolute best I've ever experienced in all of the military. Not only has everyone here been super nice and articulate, but they've just made this feel like home for us. So it's been really great and we're grateful for you. It's I made awesome. a best friend this trip. For real, for real. It's You're been so cute. good I getting to know you. And you are seriously welcome to any air show, at demo, anytime. Houston, John, like you guys are welcome out here. We would love to host anyone from like you or your team. Welcome anytime, but now, it is time for you to go drink Take a lot a of water. Take a nap. Eat, eat a food. sandwich. <laughs> Definitely get some sleep. Thank you, you so much. You absolutely killed it today. We did it. Proud of you. We did it, y'all. Woo! No. No. Maybe. What? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite MRE is probably, uh, probably tuna chunks. Honestly, it's not too bad. Because <laughs> they usually have like skittles in it, and I like skittles. <laughs> if there was only two of you that were gonna survive Me. on the island, who would it be? Me. What's uh, up, Doby? Me. Definitely Kyle. not Kyle. So you're just dead. I'm just hanging out. <laughs> He's lounging around. He's going to enjoy the time. Yeah. Probably won't survive. What do you feel about working with one of the best female pilots in the Air Force? <laughs> um, okay, hold on. Rebel, we love this question. Yeah, you better uh, really because I can hear you. <laughs> I know, I don't know what to say. Um, I have so much to say, but also, yes. I wasn't prepared for this. I'm Captain Amy Fiedler, call sign Rebel. Oh my God. <sighs> For me, I'm proud to be Air Force. You can call us the Chair Force. You can call us whatever you want. At the end of the day, I get to go get in an F-16 and fly it around. So you can say whatever you want about the Air Force, but I love it. 